Hello again, and thank you for taking the time to look at this video, the next in our series of Tiski videos exploring the huge range of possibilities that can be achieved using Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central, along with all the other Microsoft Dynamics tools. Today, I'm going to explore how we can take multiple tables from Business Central and combine them with Power Apps to build a mobile app that enhances the standard Business Central features. Along the way, I'll also take a look at the design of the app, provide some ideas on what is possible, look at how to create data sets and how to use collections. We've created a small app for the purposes of this short demonstration. And first of all, I'd like to show you how this app looks and what it does. And then we can take a further look under the bonnet and see how the functionality has been achieved. So the first thing that I need to do is go into powerapps.com. And from here, I can select my new Power App called Employee Assets to make it run. So I click on there and away we go. By the way, this is very much a proof of concept. And the first thing to say is that what you see on the landing page looks very much like one of our Tisky PowerPoint presentations. It's in fact the welcome page for this new Power App. And although it looks very much like a PowerPoint slide, we've added this image to the app setup to show how Microsoft Dynamics Power Apps can be designed to fit in with the look and feel of other apps you might have or to a customer specific corporate colors and design, for example. This particular example might not be the most elegant of designs. There, there is a lot going on in this page, but hopefully it gives you an idea on how flexible a power app design can be. This is a fairly basic app for the purposes of this demonstration and has been put together to show what is possible and what could be achieved if further time and configuration was spent on it. The first thing to know is that this Power App is linked to a Dynamics 365 Business Central demo Cronus database and has been designed to enable a user to manage a fixed assets, uh, a fixed asset or fixed assets that are designed, to, uh, assigned to an employee in a company. From the app's launch welcome page, we first of all have a search option to find an employee. So for example, I'm looking for an employee called Annette. This is a find as you type search. So as I type the names in the Business Central database come up for me to select. And I'm looking for a net. So here's a net, a net appearing in my list. Once found, we can click on the icon to the side to open in an, informa an information card for that employee. In this particular case, a net. So I click on the icon. Here I can view the employee's details. And also on the left, any fixed assets that have been assigned to a net in this case, for example, a laptop, mobile phone, security key, etc. So here within a power up, you can see a list of all the assets that are assigned to a worker. How has this been achieved? Well, first of all, let's compare this to the actual database in Business Central. So if I log on to Business Central, I'm going to open, first of all, the fixed asset list. So let's search for fixed assets and bring up the list. And one of the assets that was assigned to Annette was asset 150, the laptop. So if I click on this, we can check that first of all, the responsible employee in Business Central is AH. AH, if I drill into it, we can see is Annette Hill, the person we've just been looking to. And it's this responsible employee code AH, which the Power App is using to link the, the uh, fixed asset to the employee. If I return to the Power App, I've got a further option here in the list of employee assets by clicking on the actual logo to the side. So if I click on the logo by the side of the laptop, it brings up a new fixed asset detail card, um, giving me all the details for the actual asset, in this case, the laptop. So here I can see the description of the, the asset, its subclass and its location. And what's more, I can see down here who the maintenance, uh, the vendor and the maintenance vendors are. The key point to note here on the page is that we have the actual vendor and maintenance vendors names and their details, such as the email address and their postcode or phone number. In this case for Fabricum and First Up Consultants. 
Still in the app, we can go back to the employee asset card by clicking the return button, the back button here, and we can see that we have also a plus icon just down here. And if I hover over it, I've got a notice so that I can create a new asset. I can click on here to bring up another little option here to enter a description, maybe um, a new car. And I can select the class for that asset. And I can click create asset. This immediately creates a new asset in the Business Central database, and it also adds it to our list in the employee assets, all done from within the power up. I didn't have to go to uh, Business Central, I can do it all straight from here. If I re return to Business Central and I go into my list, I can see by refreshing my Business Central page that the new asset, the VW Polo, has been now created in my fixed asset list within Business Central. So but just by adding an option within the app, I can create uh, a new asset. And what's more, I can see that it is actually assigned to a net. So I've done that all within the actual app itself. So now this app is just to show the realms of what is possible. So we could, for example, also add an option in the app to purchase a new asset or create a maintenance journal for the servicing or repair of the equipment. Um, just the, the, the possibilities are endless. Before we return back to the Power App and take a deeper look, while we're still in Business Central, if I open one of the assets again, so if I open the um, laptop, for example, you'll notice that we have the vendor number for who we bought the laptop from and also the vendor maintenance vendor number for who's maintaining and servicing the actual laptop itself however if you remember when we took a look at the details in the asset within the power app we had the vendor and maintenance vendor names and their email addresses and postcodes and everything else which we don't have on the fixed asset card detail within business central however this would probably be far more useful than just a number which we have in the Business Central fixed asset card. The vendor names are obviously held on the vendor card, not the fixed asset. So when building the power up, we had to pull through both the fixed asset and the vendor data sets into the power up and link the two together. OK, so let's take a look at a bit more detail of how the power up was actually configured to achieve the functions and details we've seen. Back in powerapps.com, if I select it and click edit, I can take a look at how this app has actually been compiled. The first thing to do in the tree view on the left here, if I click app, I can see in the formula box the data that is being used to produce the information. Um, and we can see that we're using the employee and also the vendor tables. Um, and uh, we're using this to pull the data through from Business Central. To connect to these tables in Business Central, we simply go to data. And in the connectors option, select Business Central. We select Business, business Central again. And it'll give me a list of the available uh, data sets from which to choose. And in this case, I would have selected the Sandbox Cronus database. I've already done that, so I don't need to actually do it again. Selecting the data set then provides me with access to any of the out of the box tables that are available. However, using these data sets directly, the code that's been entered in the formula is telling the app to take the data set and put it into a collection. In this case, a collection called collection employee or C employee and collection vendors. And we also have one for collection fixed assets. A collection is a temporary copy for the database, and by using these rather than taking the data directly from Business Central, the Power App behaves as if it contains the data itself, which then allows us to manipulate the data and filter it and perform calculations, etc. etc. Notice also that this formula runs on start. And so this means that at each time the app is opened, a mirror of the employee and vendor and assets data sets are being created. 
Also notice we're using the formula re reference collect, clear collect. Um, this is used to clear down the collection each time the app is opened and then recreate it. So it clears down any, for any manipulations that might have been performed on the data. By the way, you can find a full list of the available formula references that can be used in PowerApps um, on the online Microsoft PowerApps documentation. One other thing to notice is that although the uh, formula has been the same for C employees and C vendors, for fixed assets, it looks slightly different. Um, this is because the fixed assets table is not available as one of the data entities that can be selected within PowerApps. So we need to create a custom connector for fixed assets. To do this, we need to go back into Business Central. And the first thing we need to do is search for assisted setup. Once the assisted setup is open, I'm going to select setup reporting data. It warns me that this has all been already been run, but I can click yes, I want to run it again. And it tells me that um, we can create data sets uh, for building reports in Excel, Power BI, or any other reporting tool, which includes Power Apps. Um, in fact, anything that can use OData data sources. I'll click next, and I want to create a new data set. So I'll click next again. I'll give it a name. And then I can select the source data. And this gives me a list of any table available in Business Central. Now, this is excellent because it basically means potentially we have the entire Business Central data set available to use in Power Apps. Just to show you how it works, I'm going to select the vendor list. And we've already got this available, but I just select it for demonstration purposes. I click next. And then I've got all the available fields that I can select. Um, as part of this, creating this data set. So there's some ticked already. I could tick some other ones as well, fax number or, or whatever I require. And then I just click publish. Again, I won't do this now. It's already been done for fixed assets. Um, and yes, I want to, want to. So back in my Power App, if I click on my employee gallery, I can see that when I'm using the search, it's actually using the collection employee as part of the search to display the names. So it's actually calling my uh, employee collection. If I now click on the employee page, and if I go to the uh, so it highlights this part here, I can see also that I'm calling up the fixed asset collection and I'm filtering by the L number and the L number is being pulled through when I'm using the search in the welcome page. The L number is the employee number. So it's filtering the fixed asset list by the L number, by the employee number, uh, in the case that I was showing Annette Hill. The key to all this is that on start, when we open the fixed asset, we are pulling together data sets from multiple tables. In my example, the employee table, the vendor table, and the fixed assets table. By doing this, we can bring together related information from Business Central to display in the Power App. For example, the employee detail, details, their associated fixed assets, and the vendor details for those fixed assets. We could take this even further and include another integration with, uh, for example, Dynamics 365 Human Resources and, is, and synchronize the employee's assets with the loan equipment in Human Resources so that a specific asset purchased in Business Central could update the loaned equipment list in HR. This equipment could then be assigned to the employee and managed within our Power App. And then this would in turn update the details in Business Central and HR. As I mentioned before, the possibilities really are endless. Thank you once again for watching this short video on the Power Apps and how to use multiple tables.